Songpo and welcome to season four of Queer Talks. Queer Talks is brought to you by the Canada Embassy in Bhutan. I am Namgizam. Today I'm in conversation with trans woman Tsuring Tsuki, who is a leader in her community. I feel very happy to be finally speaking to you, Tsuring. <laughs> Um, you know, it's uh, Pema was telling me how you do so much work in the community and especially mm -hmm. in the trans community. Could you tell us a little bit about the work that you do? Uh, so basically, I work as a trans woman focal person in Pride Bhutan as of now. And uh, I've, the reason, because before that I was working as a makeup artist. But uh, I, after the COVID situation, I saw lots of changes going on in trans community. And I think one time I went for a tour. And I met so many trans women in that part and I have seen their lifestyles, how they were staying, like they were, they were starting with alcohol. Mm. So I thought there should be some representative from trans women itself. So then I think luckily Pride Bhutan was having a vacancy that time. So I applied for it and I started working as an outreach worker for trans women especially. And so basically my work is to provide services in terms of uh, health, mm. going with them for health checkup and also to see if they're having violence cases, referring that. It's kind of like my job. So whenever I go for meetings, trainings, or anywhere, I always make sure that I represent trans women. Because even if you see, because there are already so much, because of gender, there's so many gaps are going on because people really don't consider LGBT person as uh, a, a gender. Mm. And uh, when it comes to trans women, I feel like in the community itself, trans women are very low right now because we don't have educations, th that much strong education going on and most of the trans women, they are not working right now. Mm. So basically that's why I tend to represent how much I can as a trans woman and to also make people understand that uh, all the trans women are also women. They deserve the right and that every woman and girl, do, they have so many protections going on for women, but none of them are given to trans women because you see they are not considered as a woman itself by lots of agencies. So that's the main reason why I wanted to work for trans women. Now. That's such important work that you do at Sering. I think it's fantastic that you do it and you're so well spoken, so articulate. So I think you actually make really good representation for trans women. Your experience you were saying like during COVID and after COVID and then meeting others in the community, mm -hmm. you were moved to actually be involved professionally yeah. in this as well, right? What do you think, I mean, is like you're saying there's such under-representation a minority right um, not being considered a woman do you think this is do you think alcoholism because of that is such an issue in the trans community especially for trans women uh, I think uh, because one thing we all know that like how education shapes your life so much and I think right away from education itself you're not given that opportunity and alcohol is one of the part that comes in because you're already facing you don't have family support already because transitioning is so much work already and and because of that you face discrimination you don't have support from family and in that process what happens you try to cope up then you go into alcohol then you just take some alcohol then you're relaxed then after well, the moment you realize that oh i'm dependent on alcohol now i don't know how to quit and by then your life is already gone and people i think that's one component of uh, it's one thing that you try to cope up with and later on it turns into addiction for you. Mm. So the challenge is so much and I think that's the reason why most of trans women smoke, they drink and some of them are into, uh, they have uh, gone to addiction, mm. so going to rehab and all like that. Mm -hmm. So when other women in the community see you, I'm sure they must be getting inspired. Like, do you share your own story with them? Um, I think basically, uh, because I remember like when I wanted to transition because when I first came into the community in 2015 I came in as a, I identified myself as a uh, gay person because I think one thing that um, trans women representation representative was like the trans women's image I would say it was very bad mm. that time because if you ask people that time what is a trans woman do you know what is trans woman and everything they don't really don't know mm. and the only image that trans women had that time was like oh they're loud mm. they drink alcohol do wish very any like uh, very not looking good looking clothes i wouldn't <laughs> say vulgar <laughs> so that kind of image was there and luckily i came from a family where my mom my achus they were supportive but I think I knew I was a trans woman from the beginning, but I didn't want to transition because when I started working at 2015 as a volunteer in uh, LGBT community, I noticed that 
the image was bad and uh, my parents wouldn't allow me to transition and luckily thanks to Laksam Pride and Kwa I went uh, to Yuga Asia where I met so many group of trans women and there were a group of trans men from Bangladesh there were trans men from Australia and, and they had so much nice life some were beauty pageant queens some were having their own business and said like why can't our trans women be like that and I think that inspired me in a way then I right away I transitioned and there's so much challenges going on to that also because I remember when I because it was I always share the story when people say how was your transitioning journey I said it was the rebirth of string Tokyo because I had to leave lots of things behind you know because I had to change my wardrobe I had to change um, my lifestyle I had to ask my parents to pronounce me she but it requires I mean what I'm hearing is it required a lot of strength yeah. a lot of courage at your end right so when you actually had this conversation with your parents saying call me she her mm -hmm. this that so what was their reaction because you're saying they were supportive also from the beginning yeah. but how did they uh, react to that I think initially it was difficult for them to accept initially because uh, my family and also they have seen the trans image in the society right now so they because when you see a trans woman, the, the, the people really didn't consider them as human being that time. And my parents, my mom especially, they want me to go through that. And I remember like my, my mom didn't talk to me for a week or something when I came out as a trans woman. And my brother didn't talk to me for a month. Because I think not because they don't want to talk to me or anything, because they were processing, I think, that time. And I remember when my mom, like she didn't officially said anybody of them said we accept you or something like that. I remember my mom came to me and she just came with one a rachu and a tego and two gold earrings and she gave it to me. That was the sign of acceptance, mm. I felt that. And uh, my brother also, uh, I think we don't, we really not, uh, don't have that much bond together. Mm. Mm. And after, I remember like uh, last year, I, I recently, my mom passed away last year. So I remember my achu coming to me and saying that I, I'm sorry, I couldn't be there for you but we accept you for what you are. And it was something I... <laughs> I have to hold you. I'm so sorry to hear about that. But I mean, when you're talking about this, it's not just like the courage required for you to transition, right? Mm -hmm. But also like the mental health bit yeah. to it, you know, like how you... It was a really difficult period for you last year. Yeah, Do you want does. to talk about this yes, with us on Quedox? Like, I mean, you lost your mother and you lost someone you loved dearly as well. Yeah. Do you want to share this with us? So uh i lost my mom last year and that time i was uh, in a very serious relationship i was dating a guy because i think uh, when i was dating because part because i came out of the house very early because i never wanted to be boxed in that label of being a loud trans woman or being a trans woman that image has the image was created but i always wanted to work hard in my life even if i had to struggle even if i had to um, do how much I like how much I can as to bring my image as not just a trans man things okay but a human being a person who is working hard that was my goal all the time in my life and in that process I lost so much like I, I lost I was detached from my family I didn't have much uh, connections with them and that process I'm I was dating and and it was very supportive relationship very mature and i think all the support that i needed that time it came from him and two months uh, two to three months prior to that i lost him also in a car accident I'm and sorry. it was <laughs> such a battle i think because i remember what people say like trans women in life now it's hard to have love stories you know <laughs> But you shouldn't give up. I mean, mm. it's so brave of you to share this and I know how vulnerable you're making yourself and I really, really appreciate that. Um, but you, you, you emerged mm. from it. I mean, like, how, how did you take care of yourself? Like, how, what was your support mm. system like? I think uh, because I, I was going to lots of trainings because I have done counseling trainings, I have done mental health trainings and everything. In a way, like, I knew how what I was going through because it's not saying that when I lost my mom, when I lost my partner, it was like I knew I was going in a wrong lane mm. because I was going out, I was going partying because I didn't want to stay in the room because I was you were crying. Coping. Yeah. yeah, it was a coping mechanism yeah. for you. But I did the wrong choice of coping because I was going out so many times, mm. and I knew it's time I have to move on. It's mm. something that 
like have, can't stay with me for a longer time because mm. it's uh, affecting my health because I'm not able to focus my mental health was going very bad mm. but uh, luckily now I have a new role as the auntie Oh, <laughs> how old? Four years. Niece, nephew, four, oh, four yeah. years. Nephew, please? Yeah. Ah, okay. So he, my actually recently went to Australia, so, so I'm looking after my nephew. Mm. So it was such a healing moment for me mm. because having a kid, because that's something a trans wouldn't get easily, in, especially in Bhutan, of course, mm. because you can't be a mother. Mm. You can't have that joy to have someone calling you mother no yet so. <laughs> i want to think yet you can't have that yet yeah but one day we will you know yeah. this is why we do this this is why we have this conversation this is why people like you share your story you yes. know this that we're all human at the end of the day yes. you know like you're saying just because i mean suing identifies as trans women doesn't make her less than a woman like a cis woman a cisgender woman like myself you know that you have the same maternal instincts yeah. right like you're saying how it's been so healing for you to be able to take care of yes. such a precious little life and I feel so happy <laughs> to hear that because I can see how the expression on your face is changing and I just I wanted like how did you because coping mechanism mm. for people is so different right yes. like you had that rational ability yes. to be able to talk to yourself like did you have to undergo therapy or did you just were you your <clears throat> biggest support through all of this I I was my own support right because I knew as I was saying because I, I knew that I had to move on mm. because uh, losing someone doesn't mean I have to stay there and grieve all the time because I, I have my own life I had mm. so I had to understand that but which I understood earlier but I was taking very wrong steps of copy mechanism I was drinking I was going out with my friends so many times then I realized this is not something I want to do in my life then I think one of the coping mechanisms was your self-acceptance mm. that you are having mental health issue because when we talk about mental health in especially in Bhutan because people don't consider mental health very a very big issue if you ask a parents or if you ask somebody what is Chalu, your kid is going to mental health okay me no he has no mental health issues because we take it aside line and uh, I accepted my mental healthness and that, like I have I'm going through lots of things right now and my health mental health is not going well so I accept it and I realized what should I do then I enjoy watching movies I started uh, talking to my nephew I started going shopping with him I st we had planned like Sunday day outs and I started keeping myself busy then I'm right now in a place where I say like it's not I'm not fully moved on but I'm in a place where I'm safe mm. so that's where my <laughs> techniques that's better. really inspiring <laughs> Swing. I think you feel like oh it's just another story but I think it's an amazing story I mean especially for a lot of people who are watching this right now I mean you pointed out something really important where you challenged your denial and you overcame it and you said you accepted there's something wrong yeah. with me you know there's some i'm not okay i think that's one of the biggest things in mental health that you have to accept that you're not okay and then then you can look for help if you don't have it within yourself like some of us like Siring and i are like that we're like i look for my strength within yeah. more than externally but not everybody is designed in that way yes. you know like you need like external like help to also get through this but i love hearing this from you i think this is this is i think very emotional for everybody who's watching like your vulnerability it takes so much courage that i i still can't be that vulnerable when i'm having a conversation so i really appreciate that and i'm so grateful for that and i know that you know before i heard about you like like as a makeup artist that you would do makeup even in the films right you yes. were doing some makeup and do you do you miss that part of yourself or i i i used to miss that but i'm enjoying the coming to work more because i know that as a i i don't know from where i got the title saying that i'm trans woman focal person and leader right now i don't know i think people just came up to me and said you're leading the trans woman movement now and you're a leader and i realized that oh it's something that i have to take it with me and I'm I remember like whenever I'm going somewhere I have to do my best because the reason why I'm enjoying the coming to work because behind me there's like 30 something trans women and what I do will represent them so I want them the main reason was getting into this work was to make them make people understand that trans women are women they deserve every protection that they're met for women girls they also deserve it so that's the reason why I, I enjoy community working now. You're amazing. <laughs> Not only are you beautiful, but you're very articulate, very intelligent. And you're a fantastic, I think, uh, a representation for trans women in Bhutan. Like you really, I mean, a lot of people actually have that stereotypical image, you know, because mm. influenced by Bollywood, yeah. what you see around. And then they think, oh, trans women are like that. But I mean, 
Look at Sering Toki. This is a trans woman. <laughs> you know, this is, I mean, not half of a human or half of a woman. And I'm glad that we've had this conversation, Sering. Thank you so much. And good luck with your work. Keep inspiring. Uh, I mean, is there a message that you want to share with our audience? I think like uh, the biggest thing I say to the all young LGBT and young people, I say to them like, don't, especially for young LGBT people, don't force yourself to come out, don't rush yourself to come out. It's a, it's a time you decide, you choose it and uh, all the time be independent because the moment you are independent, no one can say anything to you. And for the people, if you can't support, don't discriminate or stigmatize, just leave, ignore it, just let them be, it's their life. So that's one of my message to all the people. And that's a wonderful <laughs> message. So, like, I mean, all wise people have said, if you have nothing to, nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, and we have this token of appreciation from Queer Voices oh, of Bhutan you. for you, Sering. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> I felt so emotional when I had to try not to cry. Oh my God, you're such an inspiring person. <sighs> I'm trying my best. Not to try. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for watching this episode of Queer Talks. I hope this conversation inspired you and moved you as much as it inspired me and moved me. I, I'm so inspired by Tsering at this point. I've always been inspired, but even more inspired after our conversation today. Um, thank you so much for watching us. Um, if you can, support our queer community. They need your support, especially trans women. If you can't, don't be mean about it. Thank you to Canada Embassy in Bhutan for supporting Queer Talks. Thank you.